I'm Isabel Gustafson, Senior Editor for Club & Sort Chef. I'm here today with Mario Trujillo, Executive Sous Chef for Coolasasia Club. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, my name is Mario Trujillo. I started culinary um, in Michigan. I just was doing it while I was going to school and for something completely different and um, fell in love with it. It just kind of came naturally to me. And um, I was very fortunate to have really, really great people um, supporting me and kind of guiding me. And then when I decided to go to culinary school, I was very fortunate to know some very, very high-end chefs in the culinary community and, you know, culinary Olympic gold medalists and team members and consultants and the, the head of the program at Schoolcraft College. So I was very fortunate to have guidance from the elite chefs of our industry. What was it that attracted you to culinary school initially? Well, when I first started cooking, um, I started as a dishwasher. And, you know, just being curious when I was a kid and I just was always kind of looking and watching and I did my job well and efficiently enough that they moved me out pretty quick. It just kind of came naturally to me. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed learning about how to make different things, whether it was quiche or you know, a lot of the things that I ended up doing were the things that nobody else wanted to do. And um, I enjoyed it. And I just enjoyed learning about the different cuisines and flavor profiles and pairings and how to build flavors and uh, fund fundamentally like what it took um, to kind of gain that knowledge and stuff. So culinary school just seemed like the next step. That was kind of what told to me that um, there was like a certain path that was already been paved by these great chefs before. And how long have you been at your club now? This club at Cool Sasia, I started there last May. It was my first season. It's a seasonal club. But I was in Charlotte and I was working at a different club for six years. Hmm. What is it about your club now that you like versus others that you've been at? Um, well, this is uh, the seasonality of it is very different than anything I've ever uh, been a part of or been around. So it's, it's uh, seasonal. So the season runs from early May to the end of October. And then during that off season, where the clubhouse closes down. To me, that I mean, that's night and day different. I've been very, very fortunate to have the opportunity to be at this club and the membership is great. They're so happy to be there. I mean, it's their, it's kind of like a vacation club to them. It's much cooler, the golf course is immaculate. We have a great staff and it's driven, but um, a lot of H2B and J1 visas, both front of house and back of house. And uh, it's extraordinary. I, this was, it was very different than anything I had ever worked with in the past because of the, the diverse staff that they bring in. There's kids from South Africa and Jamaica and Ghana and to have them in one area and guiding these young students and um, young professionals to the common goal of like learning and gaining knowledge and and being more uh, proficient in, in their careers. It can be stressful in the beginning, you know, because you're, you know, there may be language barriers or cultural differences or just um, getting to know new staff. It's a, it's a big training and opportunity to teach and learn. Um, but uh, it is, it's very rewarding when you, when you see somebody that wasn't comfortable with something in the beginning and by the end of it, they managed their station in better ways than you know I've seen with people that have been in the industry for a long time and to be able to provide some of that, that leadership. And um, it is, it's very rewarding. And you work with Scott Craig, mm -hmm. what's that like? I've worked with Chef Scott for going on five years now, I think. We reopened our formal dining and I was moved to be the sous chef of that kitchen and that kitchen operates right outside of his office so i um i was right next to him essentially every single day and i think it just kind of built that relationship and you know i always kind of just put myself out there to volunteer and you know say chef is there anything you need me with me before i leave and um and you know 90 percent of the time it was no chef have a good day or you know like have a have a good evening see you tomorrow but in the times that uh, he did need something, you know, and I was offering to help, I think that just kind of built a relationship that I was somebody that he could depend on. 
our personalities uh, match and mesh very well. We're a pretty cohesive team, I think. And, um, and now at this point, I, I know how he works. I know kind of how he thinks, and I kind of know and anticipate and adapt to what he's looking for, how he wants something to be executed, so. How would you describe his leadership style? Chef is a, a, an amazing human being um, and a great man. And he dedicates everything that he has to the club and he's, I mean, he's a human. He's not a dictator or um, a tyrant. He's a great mentor. He's taught me a lot. He pushes me, he, he wants the best for me. Um, and he challenges me and I think, and it's all in a, in a productive and healthy way. He's a great, great chef to work for and a better human being, so I'm very fortunate. What's next for you or for your club? I think last year we just kind of got in the door and you know, kind of hit the ground running. It's a very compact season and it's busy. You know, we have a lot of events. You know, every, every single day there's something on the books. Putting that stamp of um, excellence and, and trying to strive for that every single day. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chef. Yeah, thank you. For more, visit clubandresortchef.com. Thank you.